Hello, my name is Lauren and welcome to Historically Inclined. Today I'm going to do a book review for the book Hamlet by Maggie O'Farrell. Hamlet is a book that has potential but it falls flat. I can understand why some people would like it but for me I went in expecting something and the end result just wasn't there. I gave it two out of five stars. For information I use Goodreads to rate my books and there is a five star rating system. If I had a bit more freedom in my ratings I probably would have given it one and a half out of five. It wasn't a, a complete I did not like it but it wasn't so good for me to say it was okay. For a start, this book is about William Shakespeare and his family without it being about William Shakespeare and his family. It's set primarily in Stratford-upon-Avon and the surrounding areas, which is where Shakespeare hailed from, um, with a bit of London added into the mix also, which is where he spent quite a bit of his time professionally. Um, the playwright doesn't have a name. He's always referred to as the son, the father, the brother, um, or simply as he. Um, but he lived in the same street as Shakespeare, along with his family, his parents were engaged in the same profession, the siblings have the same names aside from a deviation because the author wishes to differentiate between two characters who would otherwise have shared a name, which is, is fine. Um, he also happens to be a playwright and so on. He meets a slightly older woman, in real life that was Anne Hathaway. Um, the horse is put before the cart and she's pregnant upon marriage. Um, just like the real Shakespeare and Anne Hathaway, although in the book she's given the name Agnes. The author explains this is a reference to the name given in her father's will, where she was known as Agnes rather than Anne, which is a nice historical detail, I think. Um, so it, it, there's no issue there with the change in name, in my opinion, that's fine. The children also have the same names, um, the eldest being Susanna, and then there's two twins, Julia and Hamnet. Um, so it's fairly safe to say that this is the William Shakespeare. Um, I'm on the fence about him not being named. I understand it's a number primarily about his wife, um, but since it's pretty obvious it's him, why not just name him? I'm on the fence about him not being named. I understand it's a novel primarily about his wife, but since it's pretty obvious it's him, why not just name him? Essentially it's a novel detail and a very long conception of the play Hamlet and well there's all sorts of rumours about whether he did or didn't write his works but you know we take the benefit of the doubt here and just say that it's definitely him. I went into this book thinking that it would be a book about the death of a child from the plague which in part it was. I thought it would be a portrait of late 16th century youth and the perils faced by children and the lasting impact that death would have upon the family. I didn't expect it to be overly descriptive flashbacks of the life of the parents and a love story that was not particularly interesting or compelling. The husband, aka Shakespeare, was the most interesting of the two, with the wife Agnes being the typical wise woman type, a bit witchy, um, who hates her stepmother, is wild and hesitant to outsiders, and so on and so forth. She was not particularly interesting to me, I understand it's a trope that might appeal to others, but she didn't really take the boxes of an interesting protagonist for me. I know that sources on Anne Hathaway's actual life are fairly limited, so she could have actually been like this, we just will never know, and I think that the author has every right to take fictional liberties, but she wasn't really original, she wasn't really exciting, she was just kind of there for me. Um, it just seemed like she'd put all together all these different tropes of what would be a different woman in the 16th century and just bundled them together and she, she's come out, she's the outcome. Regarding the relationship between the twins, it's, it was pleasant and it's a shame that it wasn't really explored more. The same goes for the relationship between the children and their elder sister. There isn't really much else to add because it really wasn't there for me. Um, there was a, a moment that was quite touchy when it came to Juliet. I keep saying Juliet, thinking of Juliet, very own Juliet, but Julia gets the plague and how Hamlet reacts to that. That was quite interesting, that was touching, that was great. But I think it would have been much more impactful and memorable if it wasn't for the author's writing style. Now this, for me, was one of the biggest gripes when it came to this book. The author 
enjoys long-winded descriptions. I read it on Kindle, so I'm unsure how it would reflect in a printed copy, but the description of something that could easily be covered in a couple of words stretched on for paragraphs and even pages. They were overly long, and by the time I'd finished the description, I'd actually forgotten in some cases what I was meant to be reading about in the first place. Less is more, I think, and the novel could have easily been considerably smaller if the author had taken this into account. Another thing that I thought was confusing and I really dislike in novels is the lack of speech marks in some places. It was a red flag for me and if a book doesn't have speech marks, I won't read it. Uh, I'll flick through and if it's, they're not there, that's a no for me. Um, in some places they were used, in, in most places they were used, but others not at all. And it's just things, it's hard to differentiate between you know, the actual speech and then following up to, oh, she said, and then she hears something else without there being the speech marks to indicate that someone's actually talking. It made it really, really, really clumpy at times and um, quite confusing to read. If I'd have known that prior to picking it up, I wouldn't have read, but because it was on Kindle, it was, it's harder to have a flip through. What I actually like about this book? I feel like it portrayed a seemingly ordinary family and a middling town sort, various generations of that family, in the Elizabethan era fairly well. Um, it's a nice deviation away from court dramas and such, even though I do really adore those. Um, the author clearly did her research into the era and the locations featured in the novel. Um, having visited the locations in the book many years ago, um, it's clear to visualise the environment and it's actually inspired me to take a trip to Stratford-upon-Avon again very soon. Now there's a small part of the book that does describe the passage of Flea to England, hopping from place to place and person to person, establishing a family tree of fleas, I suppose. Um, this was the most fascinating part for me, just these few pages detailing that was the best part. Um, exploring the journey of plague and death from the flea of a monkey right through to the one that spread the plague to the family's door. Um, I admit I was hoping there would be more emphasis on the actual plague itself and medicine and illness in the Elizabethan period but that's a personal interest of mine which I understand is not going to be everyone's cup of tea and may not have made the most successful or compelling novel to write and sell. I love medical history so that's why it really just would have appealed to me. I think that the author instead decided to take the journey of the family into account and understanding their place prior to the plague and leading up to the death of Hamnet from the plague and then the grief thereafter. I think that's an understandable decision but the execution really fell flat. So that is my review of Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. It's not a book that I would recommend to people um, but of course you'll make your own mind up. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!